Hello, everyone, and welcome to Littlefield Live Streaming. Tonight's show is Drunk Science. Now, please welcome your host, Igor. From deep and dark, 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 dark reaches of the web, presented by the diabolical geniuses at Littlefield, ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for the greatest comedy science experiment in the known universe. It's Drunk Science! Cool. Is the me? Can you hear the music? We can all hear the music. Punky awesome. music. I couldn't find anything more upbeat, so I'm gonna fade it's, it out. It's right jazzy. Welcome, <laughs> welcome everyone to Drunk Science, an experimental comedy show where three intoxicated comedians compete to present the best scientific dissertation to an actual scientist and this at home month, edition. At home edition. And this month's theme is immunology. And this is usually where the audience kind of just goes wild. <laughs> they scream. Um, and, and they so, cheer. <laughs> they cheer. <laughs> It's, it takes a little while. Um, okay, but so for those of you joining us for the first time, Drunk Science is a live show we've been running every other month for the past five years at Littlefield in Brooklyn. Um, and so for this at-home version of the show, it's going to be just like the live version, except we're all at our homes. There'll be three main segments. We'll have an interview with our guest scientists. We're going to have some trivia, and then we're going to have dissertations by our comedians. And we'll be playing drinking games all along the way. So if you haven't gotten yourself a drink yet, you might want to like run to the fridge and get yourself a nice glass of wine and a nice, a nice beer or like a seltzer or like whatever you, whatever you want to drink. Um, but first, before we do that, we are your hosts. Um, I don't know how it works. I don't know where she is, but she is a neuroscience. A, she has her doctorate in neuroscience, Shannon O'Dell. Yay! Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and she is a writer at Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, um, Joanna Rothkoff. Is this right? Is this Not right for, for you guys? Me. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. And he works at Comedy Central, and he also was once pre-med. Jordan Mendoza. Um, but before we bring out our amazing scientists and our amazing comedians, we have to introduce the most important part of this show without whom nothing would work. We would not be in a cartoon lab. Igor, hello, the lab assistant. Hello, hello, good to see everyone. It's been so long. It's been so long, it's good to see you. How has quarantine been for you, Igor? It's good. I'm hanging out in the lab. I'm. Uh... I've been taking care of everything. I just kind mm. of squatting here. So what have you been uh, taking care of, man? Yeah, I've been taking care of the mice. So they're good. <laughs> okay. I've been watering the plants. So the oh. plants are good. Okay. Yeah, so everything's good. So when everything is back to normal, come back to the lab. Igor's got it. I didn't know you prepared those. That was really surprising. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to make sure you know everything's okay. A surprise, a surprise bit, definitely worth exactly. it. <laughs> and okay. Igor will be helping us along the way with all our drinking games. And speaking of drinking games, yes. let's introduce the first drinking game. Yes, 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 yes. So while we interview <laughs> the scientists, um, the uh, you guys have to pay attention because the scientist is going to say the following words. And when when the scientist says those words, uh, our comedians have to drink. And by extension, you guys also have to drink. I was choking on some wine there. Uh, so, Igor, what are those words? The words this month are virus. Okay. Immune. Okay. Vaccine. Okay. Pandemic. All right. And thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, virus, immune, vaccine, <laughs> pandemic. And thank you for having me. Okay, so when the scientist says these words, uh, you guys have to drink, but no, no peer pressure. No peer pressure, but no peer pressure. In, in your in your room, like your family members, they're going to pressure you, probably. 
Yeah. If you don't how, will we know, how will we know when we have to drink? What will it look like? It'll look like this. They, you, you're the scientist. You say, virus, I do this. Drink. Perfect. That's so good. <laughs> The set. only trick, the only Zoom trick I know how to do is to make myself a potato, but then I don't know how to make myself not a potato. So I can't uh, do that yeah. stuff. Yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get out of it. It's hard not to be the potato. Okay, let's bring out our amazing scientist. He is an infectious disease immunologist and director of high containment labs at NYU Grossman School of Medicine. Please welcome Dr. Ludo Devine. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you for thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. You got it already. So that was a sign everybody drinks. So we get how this works now. Yeah. Now it's just us on camera. So this is <laughs> very intimate. Um, okay. So I want to begin. You are an infectious disease immunologist. Yeah. My friend who just finished med school was talking about immunology today because she's watching the show. And she's, she said a quote, immunology is the most challenging subject I've ever studied. I cried a thousand times studying for the exam. So can you tell us, I don't know why, but can you tell us what it is and maybe why she cried so hard? Um, maybe she was one of my students. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's really hard. Actually, I think I open uh, when I when I teach immunology to medical students, which are especially kind of uh, uh, having it pretty rough. I usually have a slide that shows like a giant syringe and it says like it's going to sting a little because oh. I think it's like it's one of the things that hurts uh, the most if you don't have a good understanding of like cell bio, like kind of all the basics, um, because it's is a, that a it's is a, that a medical student drag? Are you insulting them? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Um, okay. But I think in general, it's a very complicated field. I think one of the reasons why it's also so, so complicated is it's actually pretty recent um, in its current form. And so we're learning about it every day. So it's almost like you have to play catch up like constantly. So that's a really hard thing because sometimes you go in class and you say something and then the students are like, well, I kind of read that thing this morning and it says the opposite. And you're like, Ugh, okay. Um, so it's, it's kind of a very involving field. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, but very broadly, <clears throat> what does immunology encompass? What are you studying? Yeah. So immunology basically is the science that study the immune system. Um, so the immune system, that's the, <clears throat> I would say like the, uh, the globality or the, the ensemble of uh, the tissues, the organs, the cells, uh, the molecules that are kind of protecting you from infection. Uh, that's the basis of it. Um, it kind of evolved that way, not just in us, like fish have an immune system, uh, insects have an immune system. Uh, it's very different. But um, um, so that's kind of the basis. It's, it fights off infections. Um, but what is it um, kind of devolved into is that um, now it's also involved in fighting cancer and sometimes it can become cancer itself like leukemia um, it's also responsible for allergies or other type of kind of hypersensitivity or, or what we call autoimmune disorders like lupus or things like that so so that's a kind of more of a when this immune system goes uh awry uh, but the basis of it is, is to protect us from infection yeah so how did you get into it? I know that you weren't always going to study these things. You were going to study animals. Uh, yeah, no, I was actually, uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to study sharks because, uh, you know, uh, dolphins, I don't know, uh, are for others. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so I did marine biology. That was my training. <clears throat> and, um, and then kind of uh, out of... Um, at a crossroad, I actually ended up working in a lab on, on fish uh, uh, diseases, like infectious diseases in the fish, and I uh, kind of got hooked on that. Um, and then from then on, I decided that I wanted to work on, on trying to uh, understand infections, infectious disease and, and find vaccines and things like that. So I kind of uh, uh, took a, a 90 degree um, angle in my, in my career and I started working in immunology, uh, I think about 20 years ago. Uh, back then I was still living in France and then I moved to the U.S. 17 years ago and I've been doing infectious disease, immunology of infectious disease ever since. Can you tell us what sort of infectious diseases fish get? 
Like what is uh, a what is a fish illness? Gross ones, like super gross ones. Uh, the fact that they live in water kind of makes everything really bad. They get a lot of uh, fungal infections on their skin uh, or in their gills. Like they get a lot of like disgusting kind of gooey stuff. Uh, they also get a lot mm. of viral infections uh, that they catch from the water. Um, actually, there's also some bacterial infections that fish can give to humans. Uh, there's actually a kind of a type of tuberculosis that a lot of people um, uh, who have uh, like aquaria get from handling fish. They get it in their fingers and it kind of does this little like uh, inflammation of the finger that can be pretty bad. Uh, so they get all sorts of infections. The, the, I'd say the most, the gross ones are, oh, and, um, uh, like kind of a fung fungal infections and parasites, tons of parasites. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I have a question from one of our comedians um, who everyone will meet in a couple minutes. Uh, do fish feel pain? They do. They do. Um, actually, I think um, it's, you know, it's a big question, obviously, when you think of like lab animals in particular, you know, people yeah. are kind of very interested in knowing. Uh, and so pescatarianism. Yeah, exactly. Which so, I am. So see, exactly. <laughs> That's a very relevant question. So yeah, they do feel pain. Yeah, totally. They have nerves. They have, uh, you know, uh, and oh. lower forms of life actually feel uh, feel. So the question is how, how you interpret pain. Like they don't they don't interpret pain the same way as humans, but they interpret it in something that's not pleasant. That's for sure. That's unfortunate to hear. I have one last question about fish from one of our comedians. <laughs> Another one of our comedians. Um, do fish feel love? I mean, if you've seen uh, uh, you know, Finding Nemo. I think is that um, accurate? Is that it's accurate? Super accurate. It's scientifically accurate. Uh, no, oh, that's uh, a bummer. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think that's kind of a thing. It's like fish. Uh, I think um, I'm trying to think of smart fish. Uh, I think sharks are actually pretty smart fish. Uh, right. Uh, You're yeah, not supposed I, to eat a shark, but people no, do. Don't eat a shark. Yeah, no, no. Let's you know, it's not because they do it sometimes because you look like a big seal. Uh, but yeah, don't. Yeah. Eat shark. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> right. I don't think they feel love now. Okay, so I think maybe if you're just tuning in now, you're hearing do fish feel love and you're thinking I thought I was going to learn it about the pandemic. And <laughs> I think it's like, deal with it. But I agree. <laughs> but okay, you are working so hard right now. Can you tell we really appreciate it. Everyone at 7pm was cheering for you. Um, it, yeah. will, you, <laughs> will you tell us a little bit what your job looks like or has looked like for the past few weeks or months? Uh, yeah, actually, that's the thing. I think everybody is really um, becoming aware of, of this new virus and this pandemic in the past, I would say in the U.S. in the past month and a half, I would say. Uh, but mm -hmm. in reality, you know, we kind of, of course, you, you heard that, um, you know, the news that we were hearing from, from Europe before that and, of course, from China. And actually, I think the first time I discussed this with some of my colleagues was like mid-December. Uh, so we've been in this for like a really long time. Um, and so it kind of ramped up. We were kind of getting ready. We were getting, uh, we we're trying to get all the reagents that we needed to, to be ready to work with it. And then it kind of hit the US and then we just went into almost war mode because not only we had to ramp up the research to start working on uh, finding drugs that could work on the virus, um, also uh, try to develop vaccines and also to do some more basic research. But also, you know, we all work in a hospital, so there's a lot of things that we need to do to help the hospital, um, you know, in order to help with testing, for example. And I'm sure you've heard a lot about the problems that uh, uh, the CDC and, and kind of the government has with testing. And so we had to like really help our institution, uh, our hospital to do that. But also even things of like um, kind of think out of the box of how to help nurses and doctors get the masks that they need, you know, like be a little bit creative on that. So, so I've been kind of pulled in all these different directions for at least a couple of months now. Um, I just want to remind, I haven't told people this, so I want to say it for the first time. You, if anybody in the audience um, has any questions, you can either put them in the Q&A in Zoom or you can put them in the chat on YouTube and then I will see them. And if I don't ask, it's maybe because I didn't see or because I don't think it's a very good question. So please ask. Um, I, <laughs> so I'm going to ask another follow-up to what you just answered, but I do have one write-in question back to the fish. 
one audience member has a beta fish at home who's sick. He's just lying at the bottom of his tank, won't move or eat for two days. Can you diagnose his, this, her fish? Uh, I would say you're too much at home and you're freshly depressed seeing you all day. I, don't know. I think that is such a good diagnosis. Yeah. Okay, That's moving probably, on yeah. from That's fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was just exactly the right amount of attention paid to the fish question. So can you tell us maybe specifically what you did today, just for an, as an example? Oh, that's a good question. What did I do today? <laughs> um, what did I do today? Um, <clears throat> now I'm like. Um, they all play uh, together. No, we actually starting to get uh, some uh, results of experiments. So um, one Ooh. part of the, actually that's one of my favorite parts is when you get the results from the experiments from multiple people, and then you put them together and you build a report or you build something that's going to become maybe a publication and and that that playing with the data and kind of seeing like kind of like something that you weren't aware of before emerge that's kind of a that's the, my favorite part of being a scientist for sure so i did some of that today actually um i had also 50,000 meetings uh because right now that's kind of the the reality is like zoom webex webex zoom all the time uh, mm -hmm. I think starting at eight in the morning. Um, so, um, so I did a lot of that. Um, I don't know. I did a lot of running around, helping on little practical. It's a lot of practical stuff, you know, like how you get things delivered, how you order, yeah. you know, reagents, like everything becomes 10 times more complicated. So I, I did a lot of that too today. Yeah. Um, okay. So from an immunologist's perspective, sorry, my things keep falling out. Um, why, I mean, can you answer this? Why do you think COVID is so hard to treat or get a handle on? That's a really good question. I think if I knew the answer, I would be a rich man right I now. I guess people don't know. Popular one, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, think, I think we don't really know that um, right now. I think, um, I think one of the major components, I think that people have seen that in the news, um, it's, it's actually triggering a very strong immune response. And so mm -hmm. usually when people um, arrive in the hospital, they've been sick for a few days. And then usually in that first week of, of kind of where they get infected, it's very, uh, it's dominated by the, the virus that's just growing and replicating, that's giving you the fever and the cough and the symptoms that people have. But then after that, the virus kind of starts going down, but there's a really powerful immune response. And that tends to start attacking the lung it's like building up a lot of phlegm, a lot of like kind of inflammation everywhere. And that a lot of people are thinking is, is why COVID-19 is such a bad disease. It's like kind of triggering. So um, I'm sure you've seen that word before, those words before, it's called a cytokine storm. So mm -hmm. cytokines are little molecules that are actually produced by immune cells. That's their way of communicating. Um, and when they are kind of trying to respond to an infection, they can like produce tons of them. And that's actually kind of what causes the fever and all the, a lot of those symptoms. But it also has an impact on like how your veins and your, and your blood vessels are contracting. Uh, it can also kill some of your own cells. Um, so I think, I think a lot of people are figuring right now that it's kind of this immune mediated second phase of the, of the, of the disease that's like really bad for people. So is there anything that you've encountered that, I mean, obviously the answer is no, but so, okay. At the beginning of the pandemic, everybody got the forwarded email that was like, eat a zinc lozenge while lying on your back. That's yeah. nothing, right? Yeah, no. I mean, you can, like, if you that can. makes you happy. Um, right. <laughs> I think it's important to be happy right now, but I don't think it, it's going to help COVID, no. Right, okay, so we got one question from a viewer. Um, why does it take so long to find a cure if we have access to multiple laboratories? Can they not divide up the work effectively like a distributed computing network? Yeah, why nothing in our world is done effectively? Uh, <laughs> I think it's the same. That is like, why aren't people better? I don't know yeah, what to no, say. Right. I, I have to say, I have certain days where I really don't like people, and I don't really know why. I'm totally same. Yeah, okay. you know, when I hear about five G and drink bleach and UVs and all the things that I'm hearing online, um, uh, 
you know, I think in a sense, it, 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 it is happening. I think there is a pretty high level of collaboration worldwide. Um, there are a lot of things that have been happening way faster in this that have been happening in any other disease before. Uh, I think we've got the sequence of the, of the RNA of the virus, like the genetic material of the virus, very early on. Um, I think we might actually have a candidate vaccine uh, maybe this year, um, not not to be given to the population, but that we know that might be working. Um, that's also would be uh, something really spectacular, like we've never really had this before. So I think in a sense, I think it exists. There are um, a lot of networks, there's a lot of, there's a, a tremendous amount, and I'm witnessing it every day. People are way smarter than me, who are working with me, and they're coming up with ideas. And I think that exists. I think it's just drowned into the logistics, the economy, the politics, uh, the society, all of that just like, and, you know, and some people are also bad scientists and bad doctors. Like there's one in France that kind of, you know, uh, promoted this drug. The that, hydroxychloroquine uh, doctor. Yeah. And it was like, I had to fight so hard because uh, I'm, you know, with um, some of my friends in France who explain, we don't know let's wait for good studies. And now that the good studies are coming out, we're like, eh, it's not working that well. Actually, in some people, it's pretty bad. So, right. you know, I think, um, I think it's just because it's a, it's a giant complex and it's a global issue. So, you know, but I think that I see good things. Let's be hopeful. Def <laughs> I love that attitude. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so we are getting a lot of questions. So I'm gonna try and go through them in like an order that I feel makes sense. Um, can you, one question is, can you briefly explain why COVID is worse than the flu? Because there's that argument, like it's just a bad flu or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. Uh, so just disclaimer, I'm not a virologist. Um, my actually, my, my uh, the, 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 the pathogen that I've been working on is tuberculosis. So it's slightly different even though it affects the lungs too, but it's still- I'd also like to hear in your answer, if you want to say how things relate to TB. I feel like that's something yeah, that sure. people know about. Um, I think why it's um, it's not as bad as flu. I think the flu. Uh, one thing to be aware of is we a lot of us have had flu. Um, actually, there's that kind of joke that goes around. It's like if you uh, don't remember having flu, you never had it um, because it is bad. It's a bad infection. It puts you out for like you know three, four, five days. But a lot of us had it, and so what happens? We have uh, an immune um, kind of memory of of those times we were infected. And so when the seasonal flu comes back, even though there's variations in strains and, uh, and kind of type of, of, of uh, influenza virus, um, a lot of us have immunity. Um, and I think even, with, uh, even if you get it, and even if you get sick, if you have existing immunity, sometimes it makes it a little bit uh, less um, severe. This is brand new. No one has ever had it in the world and we're just being hit by it for the first time. So I think I think that's probably one of the best reasons why it's it's not. Obviously, there's also biological reasons. Like it's not uh, the same type of virus than influenza. It's different. Um, so there's probably al also more uh, uh, kind of more elaborate responses to that. But I think the 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 fact that we don't have any immunity to it is probably a good one. They say there are no new ideas, but it feels like COVID is a new original idea, and at least that's cool. So. Can you, okay, can you explain what, and we've heard a lot about antibodies. Can you explain what an antibody is? Sure. Um, so it's a protein. So there's multiple types of molecules, you know, uh, there's lipids and there's uh, sugars. Uh, so the antibodies are, are mostly, there's, there's different parts to it, but the main structure is, is made out of multiple um, kind of uh, uh, proteins that are kind of assembled together. Um, the, the basic shape of it, I'm sure you've seen it. It kind of looks like a Y, it uh, has little arms at the end. Yeah, exactly. We can do uh, interpretative dancing of, mm -hmm. of uh, anybody's, exactly. Um, and so it's a protein uh, that's made by um, a specific cell of the immune system that's called the B cell or the B lymphocyte. And, um, and basically it gets secreted by those cells once they mature. Um, and what at the end of those little arms, I don't know how to make it. Like here, there's there's a domain actually that recognizes specific portions of a virus or a bacteria, and those are very specific uh, molecules of that bacteria or that virus. And it usually 
something that has been um, kind of um, learned by the immune system when it encountered uh, the pathogen for the first time. So that, that's what I was referring to, for example, that pre-existing immunity that we've had from influenza is you get sick the first time, you mount with an immune response, we call it mounting an immune response. You generate those antibodies, the next time that flu uh, virus comes around, you have those little molecules. And the good thing, they're circulating everywhere in your body and they stay with you for years. So they protect you against uh, the virus. What they do, they usually, the multiple mode of, of how they block the virus. Usually they can coat the virus and then prevent it from entering cells. Uh, they can also call other and recruit other cells that kind of eat the virus. There are different ways of, of action, yeah, method of action. So everybody is obsessed with antibodies right now. Andrew Cuomo is obsessed with antibodies. Um, he loves them. So can you talk, because there's antibody tests and that's supposed to tell you if you're immune or not. There are so many problems with these tests. Can you tell us maybe what's going on with them? Or like yeah. why it's hard to test for antibodies for COVID, I guess. Yeah, well, first of all, you kind of have to have a special lab, you have to have like a special equipment. It's not as, uh, uh, it's not very straightforward. Um, it's not a complicated test for a lab that's equipped. Um, people do that all the time, but it still requires kind of a lab. You can't really do that um, uh, too, uh, too easily. I think the one of the issue and going back to why sometimes I hate people or I hate humanity. Totally, um, always. Yeah, is because um, uh, when this pandemic happened, a lot of companies that sell um, uh, what's called ELISA kits. So I'm, I'm sure you've heard that term before, ELISA. It's a type of uh, assay that actually can measure those antibodies in your- I haven't heard of that before. You never. <laughs> so it's called an ELISA. <laughs> I, I won't try to spell out, it's an acronym, but um, okay. uh, But basically it's one of the, the tests, there's multiple ones, but there's, it's one of the very classic tests that you do in the lab to measure antibodies. And so there are companies, private companies uh, that make those kits. And so they saw a way to make a profit. And so they kind of put together um, very quickly kits that measure antibodies in the blood. Problem is in your blood, not all antibodies are for COVID. Like you make antibodies against everything. So some of those kits have what we call a specificity that's like, eh, not so great. Uh, for example, uh, they might detect, um, so there's other types of coronaviruses. I'm sure you've heard that in the news. It's not just this one, uh, but, and, and those cause uh, common cold. And so if you've had it in the past and you've had antibodies uh, against the common cold caused by coronaviruses, those tests are going to pick those, but it doesn't mean that you're protecting against SARS, COVID-2, which is the virus that's causing COVID-19. Uh, the other problem, even kind of the better uh, type of those ELISA tests um, that recognize the, the antibodies against that specific virus, not all of them are good. Like some of them are pointless. They just recognize a whole bunch of useless stuff. And so it, the problem with those tests is just that the quality of them and the standard and the specificity of them and how they translate into whether or not you're protected, that is kind of not adding up. And so I think, and, and the market has been flooded by those uh, companies who are trying to just sell their kits. And, and I think that has been kind of another additional layer of issues uh, in getting those tests. Um, but every institution, every medical center, every research center now, they're kind of developing their own tests and they're trying to like, and we're doing it actually, uh, in order to come up with like a really good, uh, reliable uh, test so we can tell people whether or not they've, they've uh, encountered and, and didn't well with the virus. So we only have time for like one to two more questions. So I'm gonna ask two just very quickly. The first one is, do you, is from a viewer, we have so many very good questions that I, cannot ask and thank you for asking them um but do you think that it's that we need a i mean i don't know if this is not particularly like immunology question but do we need a vaccine in order to safely reopen uh that's a good question um i think no um i think first of all it would be kind of not realistic um i think you've seen the numbers, I think that Anthony Fauci has said, and I think um, I kind of agree with those um, estimates that it's probably gonna take a year, a year and a half before we have a vaccine that we actually put in people, like that we kind of uh, 
distribute globally and in the US that's safe and then we can use in people. That doesn't mean that we're not gonna have one you know, discovered this year, but it's gonna take probably till sometime next year. And so realistically- People will not stay in that long. They just won't. Yeah, not. no, we, they're no. barely staying in right now. So They are not. Exactly. So I think, I think there are other things we can, uh, people are gonna start having their own natural immunity to the virus. I think uh, maybe we'll come up with a treatment before um, we'll see also what the summer is going to look like. Um, there's, there's a certain seasonality to it. Um, I don't want to say that the sun is killing the virus, um, uh, but there's a seasonality to it. So right. we'll see maybe if things are going to get better in the next couple of months, once the days are, are getting a little bit warmer and things like that. Um, and uh, so I think that's what we'll allow to get out. The vaccine is definitely what's going to help us because this thing is going to be with us potentially for a long time. So if we get it again next year, uh, then we'll need a vaccine for sure. Okay, and my last question is, um, and this has been so interesting and I could literally <laughs> talk to you about this for so, so yes. many hours. Now um, <laughs> I mean, you're staying here. I just have to close my screen. Um, is there a very common misconception or what is kind of the most frustrating misconception you've encountered in doing your work over the past few weeks? Uh, that people think ha. they understand, yeah, the, people think they understand immunology by reading it on Google, uh, that <laughs> mm. is just driving me bonkers. I've, 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 it's a lifelong battle, um, to fight anti-vaxxers. And honestly, I, I don't mind. I think it's part of my job. I, mm -hmm. I talk to my medical students, how to, um, um, kind of talk to and, and, and fight arguments that are brought by anti-vaxxers. But right now it's like anti-vaxxers times a million. Everybody has an opinion on scientific method, on treatments, on vaccines, on everything. And it just- They so exhausting. do. <laughs> it's exhausting. Like I drink a lot. Like I've been moving like happy hour time, like slowly earlier there's and a, earlier. There's the a creep. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. I have to go. You have to stay here. No problem. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Um, I'll miss you when my camera's off. Okay. Oh, wow. Really good job, both of you. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie. What's up? How are you? Yeah, it's a long time no see. Yeah, I know. How you been? I've been good. <laughs> I'm acting I'm like this now. Going on. <laughs> 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 All right, sick. Well, we have some amazing comedians who are going to be doing some dissertations for you and the audience. Uh, they had a week to prepare. So um, let's just meet them right now. Uh, she's a very funny comedian who you may have seen on Conan. Please welcome Alyssa Limparis. Yay. Hi. What's up? Not much. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. Where are you right now? It's so, so good to just be with a fellow peer, Dr. Ludwig. It's so refreshing. I've been spending so much time with comedians and it is, so, I can't tell you how refreshing it is to just be with science people, with doctors. I feel so safe and, and good right now. Great. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, well, so, and how has quarantine been for you, Alyssa? You know, it's, it's had its ups and downs. I feel um, like, yeah, uh, ups and downs. You know, I feel a little bit used to this lifestyle of sort of making our own schedule and staying yes. inside a lot. So it, I mostly just really miss my friends and my family. But other, but lifestyle-wise, there, you know, it, I feel like I'm adapting. Cool. And and um, how? What was I going to ask? How? What was your? What's your science background? Oh, my science background. Well, actually the first time I ever did your guys' show, I got on stage and Shannon was like, so what's your science background? And I was like, I got no science background at all. And then I remembered like two minutes later that I majored in psychology in college. Oh my God. Yeah, so that just goes to show you, I it doesn't feel sciencey to me. I don't feel like I have any science experience at all, but I majored in psychology. So I probably had to take some, you know, labs. Right, right. I Tickled rats at one point, I remember. So it's like, who knows what we figured out? But I was, yeah, yes. That counts. Uh, sick. <laughs> well, okay. You know what, Dr. Ludo, are, do scientists consider psychologists like scientists? Uh, pass. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I hear like kind no, of no. Oh, I think like, I think we should. I think we should. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> there's there's you're always the soft science of somebody else. Like like the people who do physics thinks that the biologists are like has been or useless. Uh, the biologists <laughs> think that the psychologists are used. I think there's like a there's you know, the hierarchy of that. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, no, I think it's okay. it's a sign. Okay, I'm being told to not do to not ask these questions to not start. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Uh, so uh, for the audience at home, you are going to be assigned to teams. So you're going to be help supporting our comedians by, uh, so by like sending them vibes, I guess. I don't know. But you, if you're drinking a beer, then you are on Alyssa's team. Woo! Yeah. Alyssa, are you drinking anything right now? Yes. Yes. I'm having a little, a little, um, a little Kahlua. Ooh, very cool. Very cool, cool Lua. Uh, yeah. cool. And, all right, well, let's move on. Um, our next comedian is a writer on um, on The Tonight Show with Jimmy, starring Jill, Jimmy Fallon, Jilly Fallon. <laughs> Tonight Show <laughs> Jolly Fallon. Tonight Show starring Jolly Fallon. Please welcome Tim Barnes. Hey, how's it going? Happy to be here. Yo. I, I, I wanted to show you all this doodle that I drew during the, the Q&A earlier. Oh. I don't know if... Uh, okay. What's going on there? I don't know. Planet? It's like just like a guy standing on a... Uh, <laughs> on a planet? On a, on, on a planet. On its own. Uh, it's a little prince. Yes, there we go. It's a little prince. That's what it is. Oh, it See, looks like a little scientist. emaciated Paul Giamatti. The uh, go-to idea yeah. of that. Tim, yeah. how's quarantine for you? It's going all right. I'm scheduling my 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 crying sessions. Uh, that's been helpful for me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it's all right. How often are you crying these days? Uh, I, once before and after my morning coffee. Okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, basically every time I go to the bathroom. So. Very cool. Yeah. And, and so, how is preparing for this show? It was. It, it was good. I'm very prepared. I looked up a lot about my topic. Great. And I, I think I'm going to wow people. Whoever's yeah. on, on my team, uh, we got this. And you're a relatively new writer for Jolly Fallon. How's that going for you? How's, it's going uh, well. He's a, he's, a, he's a very jolly guy and uh, it's fun, you know? Very cool. Uh, okay, so Tim, uh, the audience, is, the audience members who are drinking wine are on your team. Okay. What are you drinking right now? Anything? I'm, I'm drinking a little bit of All American Bud Light. Wow. So I guess you're on Alyssa's team. My team. <laughs> you know, it's there's a bipartisan agreement happening between sure. us all. Cool. Um, okay, so our next comedian is very funny. You've seen her on Comedy Central, and uh, you will see her on the upcoming season of Billions, which is a show that I very much enjoy. Uh, please welcome Ava Victor. Woo! Hey! Woo! Hey! What's up, uh, Ava? How are you? I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm so depressed, right? Hi, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's making you bummed out? I don't know. Like, I don't what know. to say? Um, <laughs> I can't trace it to one thing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. well, changing subjects, I guess. What do you? So, what do you know about immunology? Because when I typed in for the promo poster on Photoshop, immunology, I was like, oh, what's that? Okay, well, I feel a little confused as to why I get, how do you feel about immunology, immunology, when <laughs> Alyssa gets, how's your quarantine, and Tim, and, and, and not only that, but you got it on the heels of saying you were depressed. You go, I'm depressed, you <laughs> <I'm afraid." laughs> Why do you tell me about immunology? <laughs> exactly, I'm like, well, okay, let's send her deeper, but that's fine. Basically, all I really know is that I have IBS. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think they're related, but they start with I, and they're, and I don't understand either. It's all BS. There we go. That's a Fallon writer. That's Fallon, and that's a Jolly Fallon writer. That is really Fallon. I'll be accepting all of your thank you notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to the audience at home, if you're drinking anything other than wine or beer, you are on Dr. Ava's team. What the fuck? Yeah, okay. Oh my God. So if you're drinking Ava, water, yeah. Yeah, Ava gets the rest. <laughs> I get all the rejects and you know what? Rejects made punk. 
<laughs> oh, it's gonna be fine. Wait, you said rejects rejects made punk? That's right. Punk. No, rejects made punk. They made big mm. John. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, rejects made like Quibby's punk. <laughs> Punk is pretty good on Quibi. I like yeah, its good. Cat format. I you like, you guys watching that. Quibi? Who's on Quibs? I'm on Quibi. I like watching that Nikki Fresh show on Quibi. Have you watched that? Know. Oh, you know, I uh, did a Zoom show with the guy who's in the show. Oh, nice. Jared. Okay, okay. Yeah. flex, Jordan. So, flex. Yeah, we messaged on Instagram a little okay, bit. Okay, moving Jared, on. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. And I think you're really funny and you dress well. So. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Thanks. What's up? You need anything? So we are moving on to our rapid fire trivia round. So trivia is important because trivia determines the order of dissertations. And we all know in real life, the order matters. It's going to decide everything. So how it's going to work is I'm going to read a trivia question. I'm actually going to show a presentation trivia question. And you have to be the first to say Eureka in order to answer it. Okay. Um, I'm going to have uh, Igor help us out. You'll let me know who says Eureka first. Um, if you get the question wrong, you have to drink. If you get it right, you get to tell someone else to drink and their teammates at home by extension also have to drink. Okay. Wait, Tim, who's your team? What are they drinking? My team is drinking wine, I believe. I see. Even I'm though I'm drinking beer. Everything else. Don't, yeah. dude, don't say it like that. <laughs> Drinking anything else. Kind of whatever, yeah, they found in the fridge. That's Ava. Okay, great. Okay. So, are we all seeing this trivia? Wow. Yes. You got a PowerPoint. Yes, we got oh, a PowerPoint. Oh, you know, I had some time. You have very manly hands. I'm having a lot of time lately, so uh, that's just me. <laughs> um, okay, great. So, this is rapid fire. Everyone gets how it works? Okay, cool. First question oops jeopardy rules and answer uh, you have to check it out eureka i don't know <sighs> okay the question is which of the following organs is not a part of the immune system that i need to show the i have to show the organs oh. okay <laughs> okay and then whoever says eureka first gets oh the answer gosh uh eureka oh shit okay not a part of the immune system okay, who answered <laughs> It's definitely Dr. Ava. Really? You think okay, it's Okay, Dr. Me? Ava. You okay. Well, let me start off by saying I like the bullet points. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the one that's not obviously not in the immune system is your spleen. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> Dr. Ava, you, Ava, you have to drink. And by and, uh, everyone who's not with, you know. Okay, Eureka, <laughs> Eureka, Eureka, Eureka. Yes, Alyssa. <laughs> Okay, so uh, great presentation. Love everything about it. Which of the following organs is not considered part of the immune system? Of course, that would be the lungs. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. She only knew that because I said a different one and I got That's it wrong. True. That's true. <laughs> I That's totally thought it was going to be skin. Okay. You do. I, I thought it was skin. Yeah. yeah. What does skin do? I think skin is kind of also not really part of me. Oh, okay. well, look at this picture I found online. <laughs> that, that oh, skin is just on one leg. Okay. <laughs> the yeah, leg skin it's, is it's part. It's a very rare thing. <laughs> you have skin only on one leg. I'm embarrassed. So no, it's fine. You're, I, I'm a psychologist. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, who would you like to drink? You know what? I think I think Tim's gonna start really coming back with the fury and, and beat us. So go ahead. If you're on Tim's team, you have to drink right now. If you're drinking wine. I'll drink with you all. Okay, question two. What percentage of the world's population is infected with TB bacillus? Oh my. And there's choices, don't worry. 75%, uh, 33%, 12%, or 2%? Eureka. Yeah, I knew Him. 12%. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is wrong. Uh. Eureka, Eureka, Eureka. Alyssa? It's just two. That is wrong. Hey, it's my turn. <laughs> Dr. Ava. It's 33, bitch. <laughs> 33. So you get to give a drink away, but also Alyssa and Tim, you also have to drink. Right. 
So I'm going to give my drink to Tim because I do feel like Tim is beating everyone so far, even though he is not. <laughs> Agreed. Tim, you get, they're coming for you. Okay. Question. Wow, sure. I get a cheer for that. That's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Any, any notes on that, Dr. Lodo? If anything is wrong, just let me know. Yeah, really? no, that's good. Good so okay. far. He said the skin thing. He was like, yeah, oh. the skin was kind of uh, off. Yeah. yeah this skin. one was good. Wow. Okay. Question three. The bubonic plague is estimated to have killed 30 to 60% of Europe's population. Was it caused by a bacteria or a virus? Eureka! <laughs> Dr. Ava? Everyone thinks it's a virus, it's a bacteria. That is correct. It's oh, a bacteria. Wow. Yeah. And it a pestis. I, I was gonna say you're sending a pestis, so. <laughs> I like yeah, you were gonna. Vague, but... Yeah, that's a type of pasta, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's a picture of it right there, in case you're wondering. Does, the yeah. Pesto. yeah. <laughs> I give oh. my drink to the doctor. Can I do that? Yes, you can. Oh. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Well, I'll drink because I am also a doctor. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's all drink um. to that. <laughs> okay. Question four. Name the three basic shapes of bacteria. <laughs> oh, there's no options here. Oh, wow. Like, wow. We just have to, uh, Eureka. Yes, Tim. Circle. Okay. <laughs> um, Pill-shaped. Okay. Um, sort of three circles in, a, in, a, in an orb. Um. <laughs> I'm going to give you two out of three for that one. Yeah. So you can, you can drink, um, you can drink a third of a drink. Okay. Does can anyone want to guess the third shape? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to recap that we had a circle, a few <laughs> circles, and what was the, and what was your third guess? It was oh, a pill shape. Pill shape. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Which yeah. was the wrong one? Was it the pill? No, it's three circles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. Okay, spaghetti. Yeah, sure. Spaghetti. We'll say spaghetti is the answer. Well, what I was gonna say, it's 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 spherical, rod-like, uh -huh. or twisted. I would say spaghetti is close to twisted, so I'm gonna give you the point. Who's silly? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun, it's twisted, it's caucus. We got a little bit of, you know, fun. <laughs> so you can give away a drink if you'd like. Me? Yeah. It's going to go to all its own. Thank you very much. If everyone's drinking beer, come join me. And uh, what's what's um, what's the score we have, Igor? Uh, the score at the moment is uh, Alyssa with one point, uh, Tim with two thirds of a point, <laughs> and Dr. Ava with two and a third point. Oh, oh. No. Okay, so all right, I can get going into question five. Okay, this is a hard one. Oh, what is great. the name for a virus composed of RNA and uses the enzyme reverse transcriptase in order to replicate? A hint is HIV is an example of this type of virus. Okay, Ava said spaghetti, and now I got to answer yeah. what type of virus HIV is composed of <laughs> RNA. I mean, really, this is, I got to phone a friend. Doctor? Dr. Ludwig? <laughs> Anyone? Yeah, it's kind of old school, old school. Yeah, that's a great hint. Anyone can answer this? Yeah. Anyone can answer. All right, Eureka. Yes, Tim. Uh, reverse the polarity. <laughs> That's the name of the virus is reverse yes. the polarity? Unfortunately, that is incorrect. Right. So we're trying to name something? Yeah, I think we're trying to name something. What is the name for okay. You know, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna say what it is. The answer is retrovirus. Yeah. Oh, that sounds oh, so cool. Now your hint makes sense. Now your hint makes sense. And it's and a cool graphic. Thank you. I did it mostly so hey. I could get the graphic. Um, and so I think we have a winner. It's me. Yes. It's me. I won. Congratulations. Thank you. Now what? OK, so now that we have our uh, winner, we're going to go into dissertation. So. Ava, Dr. Ava, you can decide the order of dissertations. Oh my gosh. What is the, what are the topics again? No offense. Do I get to know those or do I just pick people? You just pick people. Okay. 
Okay. I'm doing innate versus adaptive immune system. If that has any. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? Just name your top. I guess. What do you want, Tim? Name your top. What? What? My topic is is. Um, no, name your order of choice. This is fine. Uh, I'm this my way. I, if I could go second, that would be. I'll go second. Alyssa, what do you want? <laughs> no, you're, the you're the winner. Wow. What do you, do you want, first or last? Your call. I don't. This is the type of politics we need. This but really. I can't is. believe you yeah. took the second. Oh my God, that's. Sick. I know, because now. Well, we're Alyssa, like... you choose. You have to choose because that's what I want. Because I. Know, I was. You know, I was hoping to not win because I didn't want to be saddled with yeah, this. Yeah, fucking sucks. <laughs> it sucks. You have to choose because that's what I choose as a winner. Is that no, you choose? No, no, no. You you knew the pasta line, and you know what? Now you pay for it. So Fine. I. I'll go now, and Alyssa, you can be the third, and you can spend this whole time worrying about whether your presentation is going to stress everyone out or not. Damn. I want to know. What, I want to know what Jordan's eating right now. That's my hard-hitting question. Jordan, you're not even supposed to be on camera. Hey, why? <laughs> everyone else is. What do you mean? No, I'm, I'm about to say something. You gotta go. <laughs> so I, uh, I say, um. No, it's uh, me shit. now. <laughs> I don't have any lines right now. No. I'm okay. All right, I'll, I'll leave too. Good, uh, best of luck. Hey. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to do my presentation. No, you say, Ava. You say. I have to say one. Oh, I, I leave too. You yeah. guys leave. Alyssa right. can. I'll be. Bye. Do I stay alone? You stay. You stay alone with Ludo. Can I start? Hey. No. I was I'm going to say one thing first. Okay. Ready? Okay. Our comedians have been preparing long and hard. You, Ava, Dr. Ava, for the past seven years to deliver this dissertation. Ava, what, Dr. Ava, what is your dissertation on? New England vampire panic. That doesn't sound like science, but I'm sure that we- I wouldn't. didn't choose it. I know. Don't worry. I don't know what it is either, though I didn't look it up. Um, it's really um, good. Okay, so all three comedians will present their dissertations now in the order that you just selected after each one, Dr. Ludo will have the opportunity to question them as you would a normal dissertation or PhD student depending on their thesis, okay? Gotcha. That works for me. And I just wanna say, Dr. Ludo, you have been on screen the entire time. I see you. I thank you for having such an animated face. Thank you. That yeah. has to be tired. I mean, you see the background? Tiring. Yeah. The, the yeah. background is great. My dog okay. kind of might come in at some point. I noticed that my dog was in now. That's great. Okay, I'm going to leave you, Ava. Okay, and I'll take over. Take over. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so welcome everyone. It's kind of just us, but I know everyone's here, so that's cool. I'm going to start sharing my screen, and if you see anything that it, you shouldn't see, that's just honor code. You don't say anything. Can you see that? Can you see me in the corner? I don't get You're not going to respond. No one can. Yeah, I, I'll see you. No, this is a private part. Okay, that's a joke. Okay, so my topic is called, oh gosh, the chat. I can't see the chat and also do this. So that's interesting. So it's free reigns for me. That my topic is vampire panic. And then the joke you already saw that I'll say now is at the disco. No, that's a joke. Okay, basically my presentation is a study on a sad, ultimately creepy part of history that may depress you, but that's not my fault because history isn't my fault. I'm just here to talk about it. Okay, it's by me, Ava Victor, scholar at large. <laughs> Disclaimer, everything in this presentation is something I learned from Wikipedia earlier today. Are you chatting because you're mad at me or because you're having a good time? Hard to say. Okay, I can't see what you're writing. Next, I feel the odds are stacked against me because this topic is really sad and I understand that I chose my topic and also got first pick, but that actually feels beside the point. Okay, and in 10th grade, yeah, I did convince a girl named Nicole, who was my lab partner, that Kristen Stewart was my cousin. And at the same time convinced, I don't know what this has to do with anything, just disclaimer about me, I guess. And I also convinced her in the same day at the same time that Johnny Depp was my uncle. She believed me and then she got mad when she found out that that wasn't true. I get that. Okay, the goal of this presentation is to find a silver lining in all of this because I'm already depressed and I personally can't really process any more sad stuff. Obviously, hugs and kisses. Okay, basically let's center ourselves. It's the 19th, can, okay, is everyone having fun? I can't, okay. It's the 19th century, which means it's the 1800s. And a lot of people sometimes think that 19th century is the 1900s, but that's wrong. It's happening in Vermont and Connecticut and Rhode Island mostly. The silver lining here is that it didn't seem to hit Maine. 
And I think that Massachusetts is exempt because they were doing the Salem witch trials 200 years earlier. Can everyone hear me? Oh my God. Okay. Yes. All right. It's great. Oh, thanks, Alyssa. Thank God, my God. Okay. So, oh, and I'll also say, okay, no, I have nothing else to say. This is New England. If you didn't know that, these are the states that, comp that comprise New England. Okay. People had tuberculosis, which we've gone over a little bit today. If you don't know what tuberculosis is, Nicole Kidman and Moulin Rouge had it. And so if you, so if you need to remember what it seems like, that's what it is. The silver lining here is that that's a great movie and does ultimately romanticize illness. Basically at that time, they didn't really have the word for tuberculosis. So they called it consumption, meaning basically that they thought dead people were trying to consume the bodies of living people in sort of a vampire way. Um, the silver lining here is that um, if this hadn't happened in history, we probably wouldn't have the trope of hot vampire today, which we are incredibly grateful for. It's the worst picture of him I could find because he's hot. Wait, I feel like there was something else I was supposed to say. Oh yeah, consumption as in consuming you. Glad I didn't leave that out. <laughs> okay, basically people um, were scared of people's bodies after they died. And so they took the, because they thought they would come back as vampires to kill everyone. So they took the buried bodies out of the ground and took out their internal organs from their dead bodies and they, and they burned them. <sighs> Reminder, it isn't my fault that this is depressing. It's history's fault. So I already said that, but it's nice to remember. Then they would unfortunately do a thing where they would inhale the smoke of the organs as they burned, and then they would eat the ashes to cure this consumption. This is true, I learned it from Wikipedia. Obviously the silver lining here is, it seems like Robert Pattinson is having the career he wants to be having by mainly working with choice directors and being exclusive with the projects he takes on, and mostly they are at A24. No, the actual silver lining, this is my cat from, last year and he died and it's okay because he was old but it was sad obviously and his name is Howard beside the point when the vet was like do you when we were putting him down and the vet was like do you want us to get rid of the ashes or do you want to keep them that was a big debate amongst my family where we're thinking what would we do with the ashes what would we you know so we decided not to get ashes the silver lining that I'm trying to get to here is that at this time when there were ashes people knew what to do with them because it was common that you eat them. So when you had ashes, there was no question, you just ate them. And that's a silver lining because it took care of a question. <clears throat> so now we're gonna get into one famous case and then don't worry, I'll be right out of your hair. The most famous case is a woman named Lena who was 19 and her name was actually Mercy Lena, but for the sake of this, I think we needed a visual. And so this is a Lena we're gonna work off of and she's gonna be the prototype for what we're talking about. Basically her mom had it and then her sister had it and her brother had it and then she got it. This is tuberculosis, but no one knew what that was. As I've said before, I'm just repeating myself. Everyone in the town, Rhode Island, RISD, was convinced someone in the family was a vampire. And so after Lena died, her dad said, yeah, you can go back into her coffin and do the whole burning ritual thing. But then when they went into the coffin, it seemed like she was still alive because her blood was still pumping and fresh and stuff. And she had turned over in her grave. And so they, they burned her just like they did with everyone else, but they fed the ashes to her only brother who was still alive. And then that brother actually died two months later, probably from eating the ashes. But that's, I'm not a scientist, that's just my a guess. Silver lining here is the brother's name was Edwin, which is a nice name and we're not naming people that anymore. And we should think about why. People always accuse women of being evil. This has, it's hard to get from the last slide to this one, but I think we should just go there. Shout out, no, pussy hats suck. They're trans exclusionary, they're for white women only. Blech. Okay, what was my point? Oh yeah, people are always accusing women of being evil, right? And Rhode Islanders, got, okay, that was actually about the Lena stuff. And now we're gonna move on to a different thing. This is well made. Rhode Islander has got a lot of bad press for doing this weird shit to dead bodies. And I think we can all kind of get to why they got bad press. But the silver lining here is no press is bad press. And the media is always going to beat people when they're down like, okay, Brittany has a shaved head, they're eating ashes. But really you never know what's going on with someone. So we should be quick not to judge. And I guess the silver lining here is 
the media will always be cruel. And that's consistent. And sometimes consistency is comforting. In conclusion, everything is okay because vampires are only real if they're hot and trying to fuck you. And Kristen Stewart is gay. Thank you, that's the end of my presentation. Wow. Incredible job, Ava. Did you like it? So funny. That's great. Okay, and doctor, I think this is still my turn. If it's oh, not, okay. that's cool. Dr. Ludo, you have the opportunity to question Dr. Ava about anything that she presented. Uh, no, I think it was a really good presentation. Um, the old caps, like font, was a little bit screaming in my face that time. Oh, okay. Uh, but you I gotta what? say, it was I screaming. Agree. It was, it was right. so loud in the black and white. I didn't it imagine so it would loud. Screamed that way. It's not my fault. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I would say a uh, bonus or uh, or uh, what's the name of uh, um, when you get a mention uh, for, uh, you know, reference to Kristen Stewart being gay and trans exclusive uh, sucks. So I would say just for that, uh, you definitely deserve your diploma. Thank wow. you. I'm a good girl. Yep. <laughs> wow. Remember, we can only give out one diploma. So. Oh, OK. So that. I'm going to reel that one in. <laughs> no. Nah. Okay, should I leave? Thank you for everything. Should I hide? Yeah, we all we all leave now except I Hi. Okay, our next comedian is Tim. Tim, come back, please. All right. I have What's to up? fight for this diploma now. Yes. Uh, I will mail right. it if Let's you see. if you deserve it. Uh, what is your topic, Tim? I'm talking about uh, vaccines. Whoa, sick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck, man. I, I really appreciate Thanks. you seeing the show, and um, I, I like you. Bye. All right. Bye. Okay, so what is a vaccine? First, let's talk about the etymology of the word. And by take a look at the etymology, I really just mean stare at it for a second. This is the word vaccine, uh, vaccine, it's pretty cute, right? Starts with the, with a V, then it has those two, two C's in the middle and, uh, has an E at the end, you know, that's hot. Just rolls off the tongue. Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. I'm actually surprised you never meet people in the world named Vaccine. It would be a great name. And I might just start calling people that, you know, shout out to Vaccine Waters. So much better than other words. Like if the word vaccine had a different meaning, we'd all be less ashamed about stuff. Like a story about your mom walking in on you masturbating versus a story about your mom walking in on you vaccinating just hits different. Whole nother world we're living in then. But my point is that, um, Vaccines are basically like the it girl in a romantic comedy, you know, a high school dramedy or whatever, you know, like if you look at the news right now, everyone basically wants to have a meet cute with the coronavirus vaccine, you know, vaccine. Uh, anyway, I'm here to tell you about what vaccines are, something that I definitely know because I've read a lot of fantasy books and let me tell you, it began with the forging of the great rings. You know, three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest and fairest of all beings. Seven to the dwarf lords, great miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls. And nine, nine rings were gifted to the race of men who above all else desire power. Uh, but within each ring was bound the strength and will to govern each race and they were all of them deceived. For another ring was made. In the land of Mordor, in the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord Sauron forged in secret a master ring to control all others. And he poured into it his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. One ring to rule them all. I think I went on a bit of a tangent there. But what I'm saying is that vaccines are basically magic potions that wizards, also known as doctors, 
making their labs. I'm pretty sure Gandalf invented the potion that cured polio, you know. And to put it in scientific terms, basically these wizards, they use a, a summoning charm to get a, a sample of the disease. Uh, then they draw an age line around it to keep it safe from other people. Uh, and then they use an, an omega spell and a bedazzling hex to create a, a duplicate of the disease, right? And then they use uh, what's, uh, what's known as an arresto momentum charm. That's something that's on the table of elements, uh, as well as a confondus charm to make it a little weaker, after which they endow it with a brechium emendo spell and put it in a tiny glass vase so that one day nurses can stick a needle in it. Uh, what vaccines do basically is, is allow people to build up an immunity to a disease. And so to, to break down, uh, you know, that a little, uh, you know, the way the, the human body works is that if you, if you get a little bit of something bad, you can eventually never be phased by that again. It's sort of like white privilege, for instance, in that way, you know, like a black person puts graffiti on a wall, then they go to prison, but when a white person puts graffiti on the wall, they could avoid jail because they built an immunity from the criminal justice system. Uh, and to, to get out of here, uh, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about something that came up, anti-vaxxers. Anti-vaxxers are people who, who don't believe in magic. Um, they believe that vaccines are basically a conspiracy between wizards and the, the federal government. And instead of using you know, science, that the, the wizards have, they, they, they like to use uh, uh, magic alternatives to fight diseases like coconut oil and organic coconut oil and extra virgin coconut oil. Uh, but vaccines as a whole, they're fascinating and they're complicated and some people want them and others don't, but we all need them. You know, it helps keep everyone and the planet safe. And what makes vaccines so divisive, I think, is that it just comes down to trust, you know, and that's, you know, sort of fair, you know. There are a lot of reasons to distrust America and, and to distrust wizards, you know. I mean, I've, I've seen the Harry Potter movies, and there are a lot of, you know, black wizards in the background of those movies, and I guess they just let slavery happen. You know, there's reason to just distrust a little. But anyway, that's a brief explanation of, uh, of vaccines. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Some hard hitting stuff there. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. That's a real, you know, thinker. thinker. I guess b yeah. black wizards and Harry Potter did let slavery happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, also Edwin and vaccine, both good children. Beautiful things. names. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful names. Good I name. wonder what um Alyssa would name her child so so yeah that's what I have to say uh Dr. Ludo what do you have to say uh wow that was dense uh Thank I you. think I said I was thinking uh nerdgasm uh came to mind uh there's a lot of nerdiness in there <laughs> uh uh I would say special mention for uh, for reminding people that we all need vaccines that was good that was, Thank you. Uh, that was also on theme, immunology. I'm not sure the, the TV uh, previous presentation was reading about immunology. Uh, so yeah, overall, uh, that was pretty that was pretty good. I, I did uh, think I felt asleep, uh, which is a hallmark of a good uh, PhD. Yeah, that's how you know that I'm really, I really yeah. know what I'm talking about. If you don't doze yeah. off in the middle, yeah. like it's not, Dense, you're you not gotta, doing it right. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Cool, yeah, I hope I get, you know, Get my doctorate. Uh, a star. <laughs> well, cool. only one will get a doctorate, and we'll find out soon. But we have one more contender for a doctorate. Thank you, Tim. Um, so I'd like to welcome Alyssa back. Hello, Alyssa. If you could please introduce your topic and then go into dissertation. Lovely, thank you, Dr. Shannon. I will be discussing today the innate versus adaptive immune system, something that is near and dear to my heart. 
Okay, so um, I say it's near and dear to my heart. I know a lot about it, but I actually have a lot of friends who know a lot more. And sometimes being a scientist is knowing when to speak and knowing when your colleagues should come speak on it because they know it better than you do. So what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm just going to be introducing a few of my friends. And they're people who really specialize in trying to make this complicated topic a little bit more digestible for those at home. So here we go. Um, I hope you guys uh, learn a lot and feel free to ask questions. First up, um, we have Jaylene. All right, big round. Jaylene, Jaylene. Oh, J oh. Hello, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hello, hi there, hello everybody. Hi there, hi all the scientists, this is crazy. Oh my God, I've never even been in a room with this many smart people. Um, I usually don't do like science-y kind of stuff. That's not like really my thing. I don't usually use like my brain, but my friend called me and said that we were gonna be drinking. So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. So look, we're talking about the innate versus the immune adaptive system. Pretty simple. I just thought I'd kind of break it down for people at home. So innate immune system, and I'm not talking about Nate, my ex-boyfriend. I love you. Please answer my call. <laughs> he keeps sending me restraining orders. And I'm like, you're so silly. This is such a dynamic. You know, it's like so like chase him down. And then he goes, no, no, no. And he like tases. And anyway, so innate. Look, my innate immune system, when I first went to college where I majored in communications, I failed. They said, you are communicating too much. They, that's what they said. They said, it's too much communication. I said, but that's the major. And they said, you got to stop. You're talking all the time. Anyway, I failed. But the, the, the point is, when I got to college, my immune system, when I had one beer, would totally crash. But then after living with Tanya Bately, if you're watching Tanya, everyone knows her as Tito's Tanya. We are best friends in the world. And Tito's Tanya and I lived together for three years. And let me just tell you, after living with Tito's Tanya for three years, after that, believe me, by senior year, I, I could drink an entire handle of vodka and still do a thesis, no problem. I did not pass my thesis. I did not, it was, they told me, we don't, we can't read it. It's not legible. But I did it. So um, point is, beer does not affect me at all. I can drink it now like I drink water. I do not drink water. Um, okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Uh, call me. Bye. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jaylene. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, so we have some other people coming in. And again, you just go ahead and tell me if I've gone too long. Because um, uh, these gals love to talk. <laughs> okay, so next up we have, um, please give a nice warm welcome to Chrysantha Mama. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Chrysantha Mama. It's <laughs> obviously not my God-given name, but it's my God's chosen name. <laughs> it's also my handle, so you can follow me. There's been a lot of um, toxic talk in the chat tonight about anti-vaxxers. And I just want to sort of break down where I'm coming from on this. So basically, um, innate immune systems. That's like what immune system you're born with. And that's why people get like, like chicken pox and like bad, bad things. So like you have to like, if you have like a bad innate immune system, that's why like you get that gross stuff like sickness. But what I do and my family do is you become adaptive. So your adaptive immune system is, is like my family's become frugan, which means we actually just eat fruit. <laughs> um, it's so fun. We don't really like get vaccines um, or protein or enough food, but um, our skin is glowing. And um, we're almost always hungry, but that just keeps us going. <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically, you know, our immune systems are healthy as heck. Um, we have more vitamin C than a whole orange grove. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I just passed out. I pass out about four times a day. Um, anyway, um, but I'm very healthy and i you can get my tea and Chrysanthemum 20% off. I gotta go. Okay, um, okay, great, Chrysanthemum. Do we have time for one more? Yeah. Do we have time for one more? Should I stop? Uh, yeah, good going. Yeah, time for one more. We have one more. Our last guest today um, is Darlene Chair. Okay. Um, yeah, big round of applause for Darlene Chair. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so we're talking immune systems. I got a few things I'd like to talk about with you folks. I heard someone talking about IBS before, and I'll tell you what, sister, we're in the same boat. Okay, let me just say immune system. 
that's what you're innately born with. And if you're me, you're born with more hair uh, than, than uh, everyone in Italy combined, okay? Uh, look, I used to get sick when I was a baby, when I would eat, you know, milk, or when I grew up, when I would have like, you know, meat and stuff. I was apparently lactose intolerento. Uh, but, you know, look, a lot of people told me to stay away. Doctors, stay away from this. And I just said, oh, hey, actually, doctor, why don't you fuck off? So, oh, sorry. Getting a text from Sophos Endpoint. Action required. Quick details to find out more. Not today. I got a dissertation to get. Okay. So, look. And they told me to stay away from dairy. I said, fuck off. I'm part of the chair family. We don't stay away from shit. I see a bear come and I run to it. So, look. Uh, I ate meat products and dairy products for most of my 20s, 30s, and 40s, and they were hell years. Most of them spent on the can, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I didn't have a clean pair of pants for a very long time, but guess what? After three decades, I now have an adaptive immune system, which means I can go through any drive through in America and get the Ulysses Grant Special. Does anyone know what that is? Anyone in the chat? Well, I'll tell you what. It's when I order $50 of fast food and I eat it all before I get to my destination. I'll tell you what, I'm never going very far. Oh, I no longer get sick because I am trained and my body is trained and I do not feel good ever, but I don't feel sick. That's all for me. Thank you very much, doctors. Oh! Okay, thank you, Darlene. Thank you so much, Darlene. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yay. Well, Dr. Ludo, do you have any questions for Alyssa or her or her friends? Yeah, I'm afraid uh, to ask a uh, question. Um, <laughs> I, it's very inspiring. I think I'm going to give classes with characters. Uh, and bringing, bringing, you know, other people. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Uh, I love Darlene. Darlene Chair is a, she, oh, yeah. She's, she's, she's amazing. a character. Yeah, yeah Darlene. Whatever. Yeah. I'll give her your best. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, my pleasure. <laughs> so, as we hinted before, there's only one honorary dissertation that we can give out. And um, how we give it out is that y'all get to rock the vote <laughs> and vote, vote or die. Uh, Ryan Seacrest hasn't looked like that in a long time. Yeah. Okay. So Free question. What is the name of the guy next to him? If you don't know, you don't care about culture. Ryan Dunkelman. Okay. Oh, sorry, <laughs> you that know. The answer? And we can have all our comedians come back on. Elijah Wood. <laughs> <laughs> is it really Brian Dunkelman? Yeah. Why didn't you get the Elijah Wood? <laughs> oh. Okay, oh, here oh. we go. So you guys are going to want to go to drunkside.com and you're going to want to um, choose who you think deserves an honorary PhD from Drunk Science University, an accredited institution. Well, well, well. Um, so while our audience votes, um, Dr. Ludo, do you have any notes about how these compare to dissertations? You've seen many dissertations, you've had students. What are your thoughts? Uh, they were exactly all the same. I think uh, I had like flashbacks to, uh, to dissertations I've seen in the past, the one that I fall asleep, uh, the one <laughs> I got really scared. Um, <laughs> the one I, I'm questioning the sanity of the candidate. Um, oh, these sound like Friends episodes. Yeah, that's, yes. that, that's my life. That's <laughs> fine. Why do you think we don't have a vaccine right now? <laughs> that's a good question. Oh, here's a question that I didn't get to ask you. It's not a funny question, but everyone was asking it. Is COVID going to turn into the into a seasonal virus that we grapple with every year? Uh, yeah, I think people have talked about that. Um, some uh, um, some biologists and some epidemiologists. Um, that's actually possible. Uh, that's kind of where the vaccine would play out. Uh, I think if right. we can come up with a vaccine, um, then that would get it in your cocktail. Take care of it. Sorry. You'd get it in your back in your flu shot cocktail. You could, yeah. Well, actually, we would probably get vaccinated as soon as it's available. Um, huh. And it could be a one shot for for life. You know, hopefully, if there's not too many uh, sort of mutations that we have uh, seen in in the flu, but um, so that's kind of where the vaccine would be the most useful. But yeah, I, I think it's very possible. At least we'll probably have, uh, we have to be ready for a second wave, uh, probably in the fall or, or next winter for sure. 
Okay, so do we have, are we close to having a winner, Jordan? Yes, we are. I texted um, you guys on.